rolling? Yes, rolling. sir. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Healthy with Heartland podcast. I am your host, Justin Freistadt, and I am also here with my co-hosts and creative directors, Simon and Shannon. Take hey. it away. How's it going? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Healthy with Heartland podcast. If you're not already, make sure to follow us on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube and also on Instagram so you can see all of our delicious food photos. Um, if you are a customer, please make sure you place your reorder uh, this month. It is a Crock-Pot dinner bundle, which will get absolutely free with your order. Delicious. Um, if you also received our email about our partnership with Stephanie and Todd from the Miller Method, make sure to check that out. You can also visit our website, uh, heartlandfoods.com slash try dash Miller Method. Um, and then a short shout out and a congratulations to our beloved delivery expert, Sean Lee, who was our 2020 Employee of the Year. Yeah. Congratulations, Sean. We're so proud of you. Hollywood. Um, <laughs> Heartland Rewards, if you'd like to learn how to eat free for life, make sure you contact your wellness consultant or call us at 800-492-5592. And the last announcement, if you've been following us on Facebook um, or the Cat and Lindsay Facebook, you've seen all of our awesome pop-up events. Yes. I have some pictures of this past weekend. We have some s'more making. Uh, we have some fun arts and crafts. Uh, it's just a great time, so make sure to get involved with that. Uh, like I said, check out the Facebook page. Send us a direct message if you'd like to have your own pop-up event. And with that, let's get into the episode. Perfect. Don't forget to drink your bone broth. <laughs> That's right. Ooh, and I almost forgot. We are going to have a giveaway at the end of this episode, so make sure that you are staying tuned to the podcast. Share and tag a friend if you'd like to be entered to win the prize at the end of the episode. We're going to give it away live. Yes, sir. That's the funnest way to do it. <laughs> so today's topic, this is going to be fun. Yes. All kinds of stuff, of course, about food, but we're going to get into some of the business, kind of how it works in the commercial supply chain. So great information. You're really going to enjoy this one. Let's take Ooh. us away. Perfect. So let's start at the beginning. Um, industrialized, uh, industrialized revolution, um, you know, back in the 1900s, people were, you know, doing more farming. They knew their farmers. Um, that's basically the way it was. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess... Right there um, at the turn of the century, essentially, they started to try to grow things bigger, fatter, faster, quicker, and cheaper, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, um, you know, the conditions that the animals were living in, all those things, they basically changed mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason. Because, you know, again, bigger, fatter, faster, cheaper. Um, and then from that, we are here now. I mean, fast forward, now we're here where, you know, um, you, know you have these, um, you know, commodity farms, that kind of thing, that are doing the same thing that they've been doing. Um, it's just been passed along generation to generation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, things are where they are now. They're, they're giving these animals antibiotics um, and things like that. So, yeah, not a it, good thing. It's crazy how, uh, like Simon mentioned, people used to know their farmers, know the people who were growing their food, maybe even be involved with that aspect. I know that people used to, you know, trade and barter. Um, you know, you have milk, I have eggs, that kind of thing. Um, or just, you know, being involved or getting your food from a local farmer or rancher or cattleman, whereas now you're just, you know, you're conditioned to go to the grocery store, pick up the items that are there readily available, pay the prices that, you know, they ask you to, and, and kind of go from there. Um, we've really gotten away from having to cook and prepare our food. You know, now we use a microwave, whatever's fastest, whatever's easiest, which is ne not always necessarily the healthiest thing for you. Right. Absolutely. So in this industrialized agriculture, I mean, they, they started using highly concentrated and, and all these machines and, and these, you know, relying on chemicals like pesticides and those kind of things. They mm -hmm. started doing that. They started, um, you know, changing their ways, um, you know, from what was traditionally known as farming. Mm -hmm. However, now, I mean, there's a difference where we have this sustainable agriculture, right, where we have regenerative, I can't even say the word, regenerative agriculture renegades out there that are... are Shout sure. out to Thousand Hills. Right. Yeah. Fighting yeah. back. Right. <laughs> exactly. Doing it the way it was supposed to be done. Right. right. Like it's w it's weird. Well, it's not weird, but nowadays you don't know a lot of people that have livestock or like that own a cow, whereas like 50 or 60 years ago, like that would have been way more common. Right. So it's weird to think about how like the dynamic has changed and you don't think of, you know, your food in that in that same way. So let's talk a little bit. I want you to. <laughs> Tell everybody kind of how the business works. So if you're an employee of one of these big companies, let's talk, let's talk about the chicken, mm -hmm. right? How does it work for that employee that's basically raising chickens 
for a big producer. Right. right. So the the farmer, or you would normally call them a farmer, but in chicken farming, they're called actually growers because <laughs> their number one job is to grow the chickens as large as they possibly can. Uh, they work f- for the in the companies who are manufacturing and harvesting these animals. Right. So they don't actually, uh, like... They don't reap the same benefits that the companies who are giving them the animals do. They only take care and grow the animals, and then they turn them over. Um, So in terms of how they're compensated, they're compensated based on what's called, and I have to get the correct terminology, a feed conversion. So the least amount of feed that you can possibly feed the animal and then the largest weight that you can possibly grow them to. In so the shortest amount of time. That's crazy. Exactly, in the shortest amount of time. So not only is it a competition of who can grow the animals larger, but it's who can use the littlest amount of resources and therefore maybe up the you know antibiotics or whatever else they're feeding them to make them grow that large. So they're they're caring for them you know their entire lives to turn them over, and then they're not even reaping compensation for what they're doing. And the saddest part is that the farmer who's maybe doing the worst or had a bad yield for that season, mm-hmm. uh, and their animals maybe not weigh the most – their their money is actually taken away and given as a bonus to the farmer or the, the the grower who has the heaviest animals. So it's just a really unfair system of how it's been like designed They're to like benefit pitted against each other. Exactly to to benefit the company rather than the growers, the people doing the work. Right, and the growers are incentivized to create a product, not mm-hmm. to raise a product. Right. right. Yeah. There's no like personal connection because it's so uh, mechanicalized. Yeah, and, it th- and this is these are small, you know, small little family operations. Yep. And if you're incentivized, that means your livelihood. Mm-hmm. They have to. If you're going to pick what breed of chicken you're going to grow for Purdue or one of you know Mount Air, whatever, mm-hmm. are you going to pick a breed modified chicken that's going to get to six seven pounds in the forty seven day period of the lifespan, or are you going to raise a heritage breed that's going to be half the size? I mean, that's half the income for your family. Right. And, and they need it. So and what are you going to do? And the thing is, like, the stores, they, they come up with these, you know, price per pound, whatever it is that you're paying for these chickens. And the farmer is only getting about 30 to 36 cents per chicken. So, you know, that's what they're getting for, the whole chicken. for, for raising an animal through its entire life. Right. And then here you are paying this premium for, you know, something that's not quality. Right. Which is also why they have to turn the barns over in 47 days. Mm-hmm. Got to get the yield fast. Or there's no income. Right. Yeah. And then in, in the actual you know, factory farming of cattle, then you talk about how much water and resources goes into that. And so I forget right. the actual, I mean, do you have the statistic? Yeah, the there? statistic, I mean, for specifically talking about commodity, commodity feedlot farms and beef, if you ate a one pound hamburger from a beef that came from a commodity feedlot, it will take 660 gallons of water to produce. So that's the equivalent, if I can break that down, of showering for two months without turning the shower off. It's just crazy to think about that that would be, you know, the, the majority of how our food is produced versus the other way, which is sequestering carbon, better for the environment, better for humans, better for chronic disease, mm. you know, just overall. So, yeah, it's very eye opening. Yeah. That's and the difference between a feedlot and a pasture. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's right. really not that complicated. No. And that's a lot of water. Yeah, raising that, that's a lot raising of water. beef in factory farmed. Uh, oh, remember, it's really funny to. Uh, and then this is total side subject, but the plural of beef is beeves. Beeves. B e e v e s. I didn't know that. Beeves. Beeves. <laughs> just so you know. Interesting fact. Just so you know. <laughs> beeves. Spunted. I was always like there. beefs, cows. I don't. I didn't know, but beeves. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Circle back around. I just learned something new. <laughs> right. But yeah, I, we, I, when as soon as we looked into this, it was. So much water that was going into the cattle. And not only that, yep. it's into the feed as well. So right. what they're feeding the animals, there's so much of this, you know, so much water being used. And, and, you know, people talk about, you know, how much carbon and all that kind of stuff is going, you know, basically being uh, expelled um, from, you know, the cows and just how they're being raised and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, that it's actually ruining the waterways as well. So yeah. this factory farming is, is not only using so much water, but it's ruining the water. And then you have regenerative farms that are actually putting you know I mean? carbon back into the soil, which is what holds water in the soil. And we talked about that a little bit last week. Mm-hmm. Just a to touch on that. I mean, it says like from a source which I've researched online, meat and dairy products are very water intensive. Um, so animals that are eating or consuming water intensive grains. So it's like the animals that are being fed, you know, grains or, you know, things like that. 
there's a lot of stuff that goes into them being fed that because those things had to be grown, right? The grains and stuff that the animals are eating, those had to be grown. Right. So I think they are talking about like the water footprint per person, and this is in California, is about 1,500 gallons of water per person per day. And it's not because that's how much water they're using. It's because that's how much water their food is using. Right. Which is crazy to think about. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> blows my mind. There it is. 5% of water that we have, we use like domestically, like to drink and like for human use. Mm -hmm. And the other 50 pr 55% is used in animal agriculture. So 2,500 gallons of H2O per one pound of beef grown in a commodity feedlot farm. Crazy. It's just mind blowing. And we wonder why, you know, the, the environment is, you know, not doing well. So it, I think there's a lot we can do with supporting local farmers and ranchers, people who are putting these regenerative agriculture processes into place um, by supporting them and using your food dollars to, you know, support those people. I think that you're, you're really doing more than you could even know. Yeah. You know? I think that's the, the hugest part of the whole entire thing is like what you just said is, is you're kind of, when you go into the, you know, these commod buy these commodity, you know, go into the grocery store and you buy this commodity beef, you know, these commodity products, you're supporting these farms that are, are, you know, using, doing these practices, right? Whereas you could do the research or have a company do the research for you, shameless plug there, right? <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead and, and you know what I mean? Like know the farmer, know the practices that are already, um, that they are actually taking mm -hmm. um, to whereas like, you eat, I think, Justin, I think it was your quote, right? You eat better quality food, you're going to, like, expel a higher quality product, right? Like, you're going to be a higher quality if you're eating well, you higher quality food. you are what you eat, right? I mean, I guess that would go hand in hand. Right. But the whole thing is, like, you're you're supporting these practices with your dollars, essentially. So by not doing the research, by just being uninformed, because that's how these, you know, grocery stores are set up. You kind of go in, you kind of know what, what you're looking for. You go in, you get out. It's, it's really cookie cutter. Right. You in the same place in any giant in any place that you go to, it's like the same exact setup. So if you're in New York or if you're in California, it's the same way. So you get so used to that, comfortable with it, that you go ahead and you you don't think about researching the farm. Because, I mean, can you go into Costco and, and call the farmer and ask him, you know, how are you growing? How are you doing these practices? Right. That's the other thing. Knowing the farms that you work with, you're able to get, you know, the answers, whereas the people in Giant don't know where the meat is coming from. And the fact is that probably the meat processing plant is getting meat from many different places and that they even if they wanted to, they couldn't even find out. Right. So, And I think this is a good segue. Maybe we could talk about, you know, Thousand Hills, um, Lifetime Gray's Farm, and Matt Mayer, who's their owner, um, who, you know, we partner with as Heartland Foods. Um, and we just want to play a short clip um, of, you know, what he thinks about regenerative agriculture and why they support it so much. Roll. Hundred percent grass-fed beef. Now, why do we call ourselves Lifetime Graze? It's really quite simple. In that, we believe that the cattle should be on the land all the time for their entire life, and that they should graze their entire life. There's so many benefits to grass-fed beef. Um, starting with even how we uh, treat the animals. We never allow antibiotics. We never allow artificial hormone implants, which unfortunately are in almost all feedlot animals. Um, <clears throat> we never allow grain. We never allow grain byproducts. Now, why do we have all those no's? And we never allow confinement. Why do we have all of those no's? Because of the benefits that it provides to A, have animals on the land, to be, help the environment, stop erosion, stop uh, nutrient loss uh, through erosion, help the environment, rebuild grasslands, regenerate soil. Uh, there's so many reasons why this type of grass-fed beef makes sense. We're working. Yeah, so, I mean, and that was just a little tidbit of, you know, what they have going on at thousand hills but i think it's super important that you know they find it necessary to put that information out there to put videos on youtube educate people about you know why they use the processes that they, that they do and show you know that it's it's not super difficult it's just that more people need to get on board with it exactly so i think that i i mean i just i'm so grateful that we do partner with farms like that and people that you know f know that this stuff is important and want to push that information out there absolutely justin what do you think like when you hear that like you know those words from Matt Mayer, like, how does that make you feel? 
It's uh, somewhat depressing in the sense that the way people are conditioned to understand food is just so far off base. And people have good intentions. They go to the store, they try to read labels, and they have no idea that the labels are designed to funnel you into a system. Mm -hmm. And you really don't know anything. (laughs) I mean, every day we keep learning more and more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm just starting to get into bone broth, (laughs) right? Learn about all the benefits of that. and, And there's always just more. And if you really care, you would start to get educated. It's all over the place. Go to YouTube, learn about the difference, learn how to read the labels, or just ask us. Yep. Because we've been living and breathing this stuff, and it's just so much worse than you think. You, the labels are, you just can't trust them. Mm. I mean, the lawsuits, the lobbying, we're importing things into this country and then putting product of the USA on the label because the lawsuits allow for it as long as they pack it here. Right. And then half the USA organic products come from overseas and they don't they don't even have to adhere to American guidelines which aren't even gr- that good to begin with. They only covers one little part of that supply chain. Right. So the contamination and loss of integrity in our food system is is beyond repair. So if you are as a consumer are not going to take responsibility for seeking to learn Mm -hmm. and seeking where I can go get the right products, you're going to be a part of that system. (laughs) And this morning I was listening to, I listen to Bradley podcast, like religiously it's, it's life changing. And amongst other things. Yeah. (laughs) And that's another thing. Side topic. If you are not reading something, listening to something every single day, it's what I call intellectual loss. Mm -hmm. Like like every day you can, you could read and listen to books good information hours and hours every day and you will not unlock your brain's potential by the end of your life. You Mm -hmm. just can't do it. So this woman was on there this morning and uh, she's actually Jordan Peterson's daughter. He wrote the book. uh, It's a great book. 12 12 Rules for Life, I believe is what it's called. Read it a long time ago. But she has all these autoimmune diseases. She was, I mean, from I think she was two years old, right? Just rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune, Mm. all these issues. She's seen every doctor there is for 10 years. Nobody can fix her. She's having surgeries, getting her her wrist replaced, her ankle or knee, like joints, like just totally falling apart, and modern medicine can't help her. What did she do? She went on a rumen, specifically ruminant (laughs) animal diet only. She got rid of all the gluten, all the carbs, all the vegetables, all the sauces, all the additives, what happened? Cured everything. Wow. Crazy. It just shows you how much we don't know mm. about really how the body works and how connected we are to nature. And sometimes people think woo, 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 woo. But really, all you really need to do is just eat from the earth <laughs> the way it was meant to be given to you. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And eliminate all the crap. Yeah. Like, right. Let's not make it more complicated than it is. Right. right. Elimination diet. Go get uh, one of those sensitivity tests. Find out it's going to be different for you than somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that a carnivore diet or a ruminant animal diet is going to solve your problems, but it might, or it might be something else. Bio-individuality, right? Yeah. Everybody's different. I think the most important thing that you said that I took away from that was just that you should do the research, like educate yourself. And if you, if you listen to something that you don't agree with, do the, re- do the research on the opposite side and hear the other perspective. And then you can make a decision for yourself, you know, what you, what you think. But the information is out there. The information about, you know, commodity farms, um, agriculture, um, industrial farming, uh, feedlot farms, all that information is out there. But the information about regenerative agriculture and the things that you can do that will positively impact your health, the environment, your family, that information is out there as well. And so we just want to support you in that. Yep, absolutely. I mean, we're doing everything we can, right? That's why we do this podcast. So we can take the information that we're learning, that we're giving and pass it on to our customers and not only our customers, but anybody tuning in and watching this. Um, because like we're all saying, it's it's a big deal. And I think that a lot of things take a lot of our attention and one of the most important things is what you're putting inside your body, right? Definitely. It's like, for me, we always talk about it. It's like fuel. It's like if you're into cars or you're in any kind of machine or anything like that, it's like, you know, if you put diesel in a regular 
engine. You know what I mean? It's not going to run. <laughs> if you put that high premium gas in your car, it's going to run for, and you keep it like maintenance. It's the same thing with the body, mm-hmm. right? It's the same thing. What's well, your vehicle, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you can, you know, do these things and you can really get into it and start putting this high quality fuel with the maintenance, which is your exercise. And of course, getting good sleep, all those kind of things. If you can do all of those things, you're going to be better off in either way. Yeah. And, and they've even have statistics now talking about, um, you know, the quality of food you're eating and, um, like, like attitude and as well as like, um, um, what is it? Um, they were feeding, basically what they were doing, they, they were feeding, um, inmates higher quality food and they noticed a drop in, um, like aggression and in actual fights that were going on. And they know they tied it back to what they were eating. Now you, you eat a, a horrible diet. It affects your mood. It affects everything. So. You know, oh, yeah, that was and this a, is yeah. this is why doctors can't help you because you won't you won't know you're having that problem. It might be from the dyes, right? You don't know what's in the food, mm-hmm. right? ADHD, all these issues directly linked to dyes, right? So mm-hmm. it might in that case in the inmate study, maybe it was just the elimination of dyes. You won't know because exactly. you don't know what's in it. Maybe it was just lower stress on the animals, whatever. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But the point is, is that we actually don't know a lot. Yeah. Like the the medical field. Every field, we are still very obscure as to how we understand the thousands and thousands of millions of years that our gut microbiome has evolved and how it really is your first brain. Yeah. Like your entire, like your gut runs everything, yep. including the brain that's in your head. Yep. Right. And that's, or I think you were talking about attitude too. Like a lot yeah. of, like the gut bacteria will communicate with your brain it controls emotions. It communicates with the amygdala, which controls your emotions. Right. And it's just, it's really crazy to think that the stuff that you're putting in your mouth you can control what you're eating now there's a lot of bad things out there there's a lot of bad options there's a lot of temptation but the one thing that you can control is what you choose to spend your money on what you choose to eat and what you choose to feed your family and so that's why we really really believe in eating good quality clean safe healthy proteins vegetables and you know anything that you're putting in your body oh by the way it's been less than a hundred years yeah we've basically big big agriculture big pharma has been altering what's been coming into the body Mm. so for millions of years it was all the same right it was all earth that was it yep and think about how miraculous your body is i mean you get a cut it literally like it's a super computer right Mm -hmm. and we're messing with it Mm -hmm. we're we're we're, and then when you think right here you have uh uh, factory farms contribute to the rise of antibiotic resistant bacteria so here we are saying you know what i mean it's all about what you're eating and then you're going to affect your own body's way of healing itself with these antibiotics. Wow. Right? By by just supporting and, and eating these kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, right here, um, we have actually a comment from uh, Amico. He said, red dye chemical steroids, enhancers, hormones, additives, preservatives, fat fillers, large chemicals, seaweed, carcinogens. These are just some of the things um, that are in the grocery store meat. Yep. Right. So another one that I just recently learned today, we were listening that. to a podcast on the way in, um, and they were talking about how – meat is sprayed with lactic acid like all meat is sprayed with lactic acid yeah and what that was you're getting from a commodity farm well it's because of you know things that happened with e coli and mad cow disease you know way way back which all had to do with what we were feeding the animals right they weren't eating the proper things that they were supposed to eat which turned into these you know disasters that happened but from that you know now we we there's things that you think you know, when you just get a piece of meat from Costco, it's USDA, it's whatever it is, and uh, oh, it just it must be just that. Well, it's not because it's it has these other things, these other additives, these other things that you don't know are even in the, in it. So you think it's pure, a pure product, and you're not getting a pure product. Nope. Yeah. Safe safe to the USDA is we're gonna bleach your meat to kill the bacteria. <laughs> that that that's, that's what that's makes it safe. That's <laughs> the idea. Just so you know. Right. Yeah. And you have no idea. Yeah. So it's a fresh supply chain, and this is a huge misconception. If it's fresh and it's going through a commercial supply chain, preservatives, all the things that <laughs> need to be done to make that product last, not only through the supply chain to the end store, mm-hmm. but then how long it can sit on the shelf, it's not normal, which is why we only do flash frozen product. Because if you don't do any of that stuff, you're not going to add gases to preserve it. You right. know, like underneath that cellophane, it's carbon dioxide, guys. That's what brightens up the appearance. <laughs> it's also a preservative. They're gassing your meat, like <laughs> all these different things. Yep. If you're not going to do any of that stuff, you have to flash freeze it. It's the only way to keep it safe. And then there's no margin for error in the supply chain. Right. Just a different way of doing things. And well, to me, it's, it's, it's a different simple. way of doing things. It's, it's, 
really well, the it's, it's the, the right, right way, way of doing things. And it's the, the and only way. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Drop the bomb on that. It's the only way. <laughs> if you care at all. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I think I think we covered a lot. I mean, I know that I learned a lot. I love having these conversations and hearing, you know, your guys' opinions on this topic. We hope that you guys enjoy tuning in as well and learning about uh, this stuff. And as always, if you have any topics that you want us to cover, make sure you post that in the comment section below or let us know on our Facebook or Instagram page. We would love to bring up those topics and discuss them and interact with you live. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think we're going to transition to is that we are giving away... Should I reveal the giveaway? A yes. special gift, which Justin, drum roll, Here shall now give away... Blades! Nice. So we have a six-piece steak knife set. Mm-hmm. By uh, celebrity top chef, Rick Monin. Oh. So one lucky winner will receive this. Like, share. Is that how, how we enter to win right now? Yeah, yes. so you're going to share the podcast and tag a friend for a chance to win the six-piece steak knife set. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm we will pick a winner live. Actually, too, Justin, it <laughs> opens up like a book. Oh, does it? Which is pretty yeah. cool. It's like pretty awesome packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Look blades. at that. Look how fancy. Look at these blades. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have one lucky winner win that. Hey, so those look sharp. Ah. You see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> I have one of those. Don't worry. Hey. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. All I'm right. just giving up, you know, a couple more fans of the pe and, and Bear with us. People. We're adding everybody in, making sure we include everyone who participated with us, who tuned in, who shared and tagged a friend on the podcast today. And let them know they can win next week as well. Yeah, tune in next week, 9.30 a.m. on Thursday. We're going to have a special guest, uh, Dr. Keith Bernardo. I know we're all really excited to have him join us, and we think you'll really enjoy that podcast as well. Let me talk about Keith for a second. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Keith Bernardo is the man. You do not want to miss this episode next week. I, I think it's going to be the best. The just best episode yet. He is so much knowledge, so much passion, great guy, and... We're going to talk about a lot of good stuff. So don't miss next week's episode. It's going That's to be great. Heartland Foods 2021. We're taking it to another level. Yep. That's We're it. going to another level. We got the Eat Free for Life. The podcast is taking off. We got Cat out there doing these pop-up events. Yep. Crazy successful. This is... We're going to be everywhere. That's exactly it. Because <laughs> it's the only way to do it. That's just... That's it. Awesome. All right. So let's, uh, let's drum roll and let's pick someone. All right. Got that auto generator going over there? That's right. Let's see what it says. And the winner Be is... James! James Congratulations, Collins. James. You yeah. are our lucky winner for today. Yes, sir. Thank you oh, for well always done, tuning in. Yes, you always, always, always tune in. We really appreciate, yeah, we appreciate your support that. and engagement. You are the lucky winner of our six-piece steak knife set. We will get that out to you right away. And uh, I think we can wrap it up for today. You want to do the honors, Justin? Sure. As always, Heartland family, thanks for tuning in. Share this out to somebody who you think could get a little bit of mental stimulation, maybe some shift of thinking in the right direction. We are all about that positivity train. Yes. And as always, stay healthy with Heartland. Bye. Bye.